Welcome to the next lecture of random process. Today we will do one important example which is related to DSBSC. Suppose you have M of T uh, as message signal uh, which we want to transmit. It has some M of omega as its Fourier transform and you have usual uh, cosine carrier signal and the, uh, the DSBSC signal is represented as phi of t okay, you are uh, you know used to this now we consider a practical case wherein we don't know the phase associated with the carrier okay so then we can write your dsb sc signal as omega ct plus theta uh, now to carry out analysis we also assume c the source m of t this uh, signal which we want to modulate we assume it is also random in nature Okay, this is not a bad assumption because if you see any voice signal, you know that looks like this. If you see video signals also, that looks like this. So they can well be treated as random processes. But we assume they are nice random processes. So we assume that M of T, which is the message signal process, it is a wide sense stationary process. What does that mean? You know that its mean which is written as this or expected the value of m of t that is constant and it has some auto correlation function let's say r m of tau which depends only on the time difference m of t m of t plus tau or as the book writes m of t m of t plus tau this whole bar and correspondingly it will have some power spectral density which we call as uh, S M of Omega, which will be actually Fourier transform of R M of tau. Okay. Now we need to find two things. One is the auto correlation function of DSBSC and its corresponding power spectral density. Now we will first proceed with the auto correlation function that we call that as R phi of tau. By definition, what is that? expected value of phi of t phi of t plus tau which will be expected value of now phi of t is m of t cos of omega c t plus theta theta is uniform random variable as usual and then m of t plus tau cos of omega c t plus tau plus this theta and this is equal to expected value of m of t m of t plus tau cos of now here is one important assumption that the message signal process m of t is independent of phase okay why is this in assumption important then only we can separate the two expectations you know that expected value of x y will be equal to expected value of x times expected value of y if x and y are independent although the converse is not true that is if expected value of x y is equal to expected value of x times expected value of y they may not be independent mind it the actual de definition of independence is that the distribution joint distribution can be refactored as the product of individual distribution this is the definition this is the consequence anyways now when they are independent i can write separately expected value of m of t and m of t plus tau then separately expected value of the other terms cosine terms okay now by definition m of t is a wide sense stationary process what is this this is the autocorrelation function so we call it r m of tau and what is this this you have seen already right so it is the cosine uh, random process with uh, you know uh, this uniformly distributed phase and its autocorrelation function is also well defined it is simply cos omega c tau go back to the previous example which we have done in the previous class this is what we have done there so the autocorrelation function of dsbsc process is given by autocorrelation function of the message signal process times the cosine of omega c tau it seems as if 
auto correlation gets modulated okay now what will be the power spectral density of dsbsc signal you know that power spectral density s phi of omega is fourier transform of r phi of tau and by invoking the modulation theorem you know what will be the uh, you know uh, so so the fourier transform of rm of tau is sg of sorry sm of omega so it will be sm of omega plus omega c plus sm of omega minus omega c oh uh, there is one correction here i think there is one half here okay one half here uh, so uh, so it will be uh, 1 by 4 because uh, you, you know that if you have a uh, if you have uh, m of t cos of omega c t its Fourier transform is one half of m of omega plus omega c plus m of omega minus omega c right now you have already one half of r m of tau cosine of omega c tau right so it's for a transform is so one is one half then one half of s m of omega plus omega c plus s m of omega minus omega c so it is this so hence uh, we will write it here s phi of omega the four the power spectral density of dsbsc signal is one by four the power spectral density of message signal omega plus omega c plus sm of omega minus omega c now what will be the average power average power which we also call uh, expected value of phi square t right we you know that is also denote as phi square t bar and that is the auto correlation at zero right so when we put uh, rf of tau which will be 1 by 2 r m of zero right which will be equal to 1 over 2 uh, you know m m of t square average or we write in this way right so this is the average power if you recall we have done this in dsbs and even this answers uh, when some people were confused during defining the modulation index of am how that half is coming this is another way of looking into it how this half is coming now uh, there are some examples which are related to digital communication inshallah if i will be teaching that uh, so i will show you that uh, in, in in that course uh, that is about the power spectral density of various digital modulation formats definitely we should not do that right now so they are in the book you should skip that right now and even even whoever teaches he or she has to teach it anyways now now our focus will be uh, upon a system right you have already done signal in systems so you have some signal suppose x of t and whether it gets processed, amplified, transmitted through, you know, wireless or wireline or whatever medium, we call it, it gets processed through a system and you get the output Y of T. And we call that system has some impulse response H of T. Okay. And uh, you know that how y, y of T is given, it is given as the convolution of XT and H of T. You all have done this in your uh, signal and system course right uh, in frequency domain correspondingly you will have some transfer function suppose h of omega which is Fourier transform of impulse function and transfer function sorry and the Fourier transform of input and Fourier transform of output and you simply write y of omega is equal to h of omega x of omega now instead of deterministic signals what if these x of t and y of t what if they are random processes so what will happen that if we have a random process which is passed through a system a linear time invariant system lti system which you might have done what will happen to the autocorrelation function what will happen to the uh, power spectral density for that definitely now we are dealing with multiple random processes so you have input random process x of t right as input and then you have output random process y of t 
So hence it becomes necessary to understand joint random processes like the way you have done joint random variables. Now the first thing is uh, let's say we have two pro random processes let x of t and y of t be two processes. Okay. So first of all we will define something called cross correlation. We had auto correlation now we have cross correlation. Let's say that x of t is sampled at time t1 and y of t at time t2 and you take expected value of this average of this this is called a cross correlation okay and our notation will be r x y of t1 t2 okay so in the book you might see this notation as x of t1 x of t2 whole bar it also means average right now here also we have a notion of stationarity if the auto correlation function here also depends upon only difference of time t2 minus t1 okay which we define as suppose tau or x y of tau then x and y are said to be jointly stationary like the way we had uh, you know stationary random process when we were talking of x of t now if they jointly their auto correlation their cross correlation function depends only on the difference between the t1 t2 then they are called jointly stationary similarly if uh, if their you know the mean which we are taking uh, x of t1 y of t2 if that is equal to expected value of x of t1 times expected value of y of t2 if their cross correlation is equal to the product of individual means then they are also called uncorrelated okay that is these two processes don't have much correlation they are not related to each other too much and if this if this cross correlation if this is equal to zero then they are called orthogonal processes okay orthogonal processes we may come across these terminologies hence they have been defined but I warn you here that the notion of independence is even much, much, much general. Notion of independence will be something like this, that the probability distribution of joint distribution of the process X of T and process Y of T, X, uh, Y, if that is equal to the product of distribution of X and product of distribution of Y for all time this is very very strong condition then they will be called independent okay uncorrelatedness does not mean independence in general mind it now with this tools and we know we need to define also the cross power split density we will be ready to handle uh, random processes for linear time invariant systems first of all we will define cross power spectral density cross power spectral density so we'll go back to the definition of power spectral density we did for a simple process now we have two processes here so we will take truncated process its Fourier transform its conjugate multiply it with truncated process y of t take the magnitude so this we take average of x of t conjugate y of t that is truncated version of x and y divided by t take limit t goes to infinity okay so this is the definition of cross power spectral density and its notation is s x y of omega okay following definition of single random processes we know that how to find it so you have cross correlation function now r x y of tau i am assuming they are stationary so if you take fourier transform of that you will get s x y of omega okay so now in next lecture we will uh, deal with the systems that is wherein we have a system and some process x of t is applied random process and uh, at output we get a random process y of t what will be the cross correlation what will be the cross power density for different processes that we will do in next lecture. Thank you.